In linear functions, one of your most critical elements is the slope or the rate of change. They're synonymous. Uh, and we have a really uh, simple equation formula that we use to be able to find the slope because you can't figure out where to go from your y-intercept or even what the equation of your line is, a whole bunch of things unless you have that first element which is slope. So the way it works out is m, because in y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And all this is tr saying is find the difference in your y values, find the rate of change from one y point to the next, and put it over the change in your y x values. How much did I go from one point to the next? Uh, sometimes if you're not very good because you are being asked to subtract, it might not hurt to create a template of these spots to then plug in your order pairs with. So your y values over your x values. And by plugging this in, if you do happen to have an ordered pair that involves a negative number, especially if it's in your x, you're able to properly handle that negative sign. So a negative by a negative would turn into a positive. Or if it was a positive here, a negative and a positive makes a negative. So we'll look at how to actually plug in an ordered pair. So if I have two ordered pairs, one are 5 and negative 10 and 4 and negative 7, I need to find the difference between negative 7 and negative 10 and 4 and 5. Now I can choose either one of these ordered pairs to be my second set or my first set. It doesn't matter. As long as my math is correct, the slope works out the same. So you can lead with whatever set maybe lets you work it out having more positive numbers than negative numbers. Um, but the important thing is, if I have this be maybe my x2, I do not pair it with this for my y2. This set pairs there, this set pairs there. So if I put in, I'm going to go ahead and lead with my second set. And if you need to, go ahead and label it. You can say that this is x2, y2, x1, y1 just to make sure you don't get yourself confused. You have your second set, your first set. So this, oh, I actually, yeah. So I would go negative 10, because I have my y2 minus y1, which is negative seven, over x2, which is five, minus x1, which is four. When I look at this, negative and a negative turns into a positive seven. So if I have negative 10 and positive 7, that simplifies to negative 3. Then if I have 5 minus 4, that turns into 1. Well, what is negative 3 over 1? It's negative 3. So I have found the slope of my equation. Now, just to ver let you know that I can also switch that, and it still works out the same. So let me go and make this. That's a horrible squeaky noise x1, y1, x2, y2. So now I'm going to go negative 7 minus negative 10. Because x2 minus x1, or sorry, y2 minus y1, x2 is 4 minus x1, which is 5. Negative and a negative turn into a positive 10. Negative 7, positive 10 simplifies to 3. 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. 3 over negative 1 simplifies to negative 3. And boom, I've got it. Either way, it doesn't matter as long as you handle your negative signs correctly. And if you even want to double check, did I do this right? Switch the order. And if it simplifies to the same answer, you did it right. So it's a good way to just check yourself if you don't have a multiple choice option giving you the feedback of having it right or wrong. So this is how to solve for slope.